Okay, so welcome back to the shed. Um, today we start the process of stripping down this Honda CBX uh, 1000 uh, uh, engine. Uh, this engine comprises of being a six cylinder motor, 24 valves, over eight cams, for those of you that aren't familiar. Um, so why am I stripping this motor down? Well, I bought this bike some time ago and uh, it was a fairly low mileage bike, but it's been stood for some time. Um, upon investigation, I found that it had six stuck exhaust valves. Uh, so I thought I was going to do a top end rebuild on this engine. Um, on further investigation, after removing the cylinder head, I actually found that there's a worn big end. So as a result, I've got to strip this engine right the way down and rebuild it. So there's no point in doing half a job, it's going to come right the way apart and I'll be replacing all the components, gaskets and seals as, uh, as I go. So as a starting point for this, uh, last Friday um, I put the head back on, just put it down with a few securing nuts on the, on the cylinder head, put the rocket cover back on uh, and degreased it. Reason for degreasing it is, is not the grease itself and, and uh, the oil of the grease, but it's the, the, uh, the grit that it absorbs. So I've degreased this engine and uh, used a detergent and washed the, the grease off. So really, we get to the starting point now of pulling this motor apart. So well, I'm going to be putting this on time lapse. So you'll see this, uh, this video speeded up. And when uh, it comes to a point of uh, things that are worth noting, I'll stop and uh, I'll share that experience with you. So anyway, we'll see you soon and catch up shortly. Okay, so uh, I've got the cylinder head off now, which was a fairly straightforward process. Um, I've taken the oil filter off and we'll have a look at, uh, to see if that's contaminated white metal in a little bit once it's drained. But I just want to share something with you, it just really annoys me. This butchered uh, uh, clutch retaining nut on here. I got the tool, but I'm not even sure the tool is going to get over that. But uh, we'll give it a go and try my impact wrench and see if we can get this thing off. But uh, yeah, just uh, frustrating when you see things like that. Catch up soon. Okay, so we got to a point where the clutch is off. I'll remove the oil pump driving chain in a minute and the various elements in here. Uh, what I'm going to do now is just pull uh, pull these barrels off and uh, then we're in a position to start uh, splitting the motor after we've uh, uh, after we've removed the, the sump etc. So uh, yeah we're getting close to pulling this motor apart. It's not actually that big a job when uh, when it comes to it. It just uh, requires a bit of patience. So uh, there we go. So I'm just going to put you back on and I'll just show you removing the, the barrels. Okay, so that's the barrels removed now. As I said, I thought this was a pretty slow mileage engine. And I think we can see here there's very little blow by past the piston. So um, we'll do an inspection with us within the service limits and see where those rings are. But uh, looking at those, they've either been recently been changed or this is a low mileage motor. So um, we'll see where we are. But the main reason of pulling this apart is there is a slight bit of movement in number four cylinder. On the bottom end, so we're going. We're going to split the the motor and inspect that. Hopefully, it's just a new bearing in there, and we should be good to go. So, um, just a couple of notes on this crankcase. So, there's a couple of remedial stuff. At some point, this has obviously broken a chain and uh, done some damage there. 
So uh, I'm going to get, I've got the piece and I'll get that welded. Someone's obviously but used Bondo on there. But uh, yeah, so there we go. So we're getting close now. Um, don't know how long we are, I'm probably half an hour in. So, you know, it's, it's, as I say, it's uh, a fairly straightforward job um, to do in, in relative terms. But let's keep going and see where we get to. Um, so those of you who aren't familiar with the CBX, uh, it differs from uh, the CB in the sense that it's actually chain driven um, through this drive here. So it sits across the, uh, the clutch shaft, input shaft into the gearbox and, uh, and basically that drives a, um, a chain on a, a dog that sits into the oil pump in here. So that's it really. So I just thought I'd share that and that's slightly different whereas the the one on the C V series is on normally sits on the other side here and is gear driven. So that's the difference if uh, any of you've never worked on a CBX and worked on a CB. Okay, so I've just been cleaning up a bit of oil. Inevitably, when you're pulling these things apart, you get some residual oil in there. Uh, what I do is remove uh, the um, one of the plugs off the bottom of the, the crankcase here, under the crank, and drain it out of there, because that's inevit inevitably where they leak. Um, you'll see the time lapse. It came out the side, and I just forgot the dirt. So I've gone back, um, removed that, drained that out. So what I'm going to do now is remove the, um, remove the sump, and we'll see what... Uh, mess is waiting for us in there which would be quite interesting so yeah it's only eight volts so i'll record this as i go and then hopefully we can see what's what awaits us in here and it gives us an opportunity to bring out what residual oil is in the in the crank as we go. So that's all of them uh, loose now. So I'm just going to do that little tap with my mallet which is on the bench here. Just to make sure it's, uh, it's free. Which it is. So we'll go two handed on these. So what we're going to be looking for is any white metal that may be residing in the bottom of the sump. Uh, the wear on that number four big end is fairly minimal, but uh, we'll see. And I've also got to still inspect the oil filter, which I'm letting drain down at the moment. But irrespective, the engine's got to come apart, so whether there's oil in there or not, we'll wait and see. Well, it looks pretty messy in there, but most of it seems to be silicon rubber. What I'll do in a minute, I'll um, I'll put this in a bowl and uh, we'll wash it off and see what we can find. But you can see that's pretty messy in there. But most of it seems to be silicon rubber, to be quite honest. But uh, yeah, so what we'll do is put it in a bowl and we'll sieve it down and see what we get in there. So not too much mess on the on the galls here. And that looks in good condition, it's not split, so that's uh, one uh, one promising uh, one promising thing. As you'll know now these, these get very very hard. You've got to remove this off to get the, the pump off, but uh, pick up the pump off, but uh, yeah they go quite hard. So what I'm gonna do is get a heat gun and just soften this up in a minute. Um, you can get you can get replacements from the six cents for these, and uh, I think Terry Schmidt's now started them in the US. So uh, so there's a number of places we can get you can get them now. So anyway, that's the sump removed. You've seen the mess that's in there. We're just going to carry on now and do things in time lapse.
Okay, so we're getting to the point now of splitting the uh, the two halves. Um, on the CBX, there's four bolts on the top of the crankcase, so those have to be removed before you uh, turn the motor over um, to remove the bottom section. So uh, I'm just going to quickly remove those now, and then uh, and then we'll start removing all of the bolts on the bottom part of the crankcase. But we'll turn it upside down to do that. So yeah, so um, we're moving on. So I got a cup of tea, which my good lady bought in for me. But before we do that, I'm just going to try and split these cases if they come apart quickly enough. Um, so yeah, um, all the bolts removed. In here is one bolt, so if you're ever pulling a CVX apart, remember there is a crankcase bolt just inside the uh, something there. So let's have a go. There we go, so really it is as easy as that. So I haven't forgotten any bolts, so I'm just going to pull this off now. Okay, and what we're going to do is go and lay it on the floor. And first things first, I can see that the bearings aren't in wonderful condition. Um, so it looks like they're going to need replacing. Uh, but uh, that's uh, yet to be decided. Um, but looking at them, there does seem to be a wet somewhere in there. But let me actually just bring the camera over and uh, you can have a good look inside. Might as well whilst we're here, before I have my tea. So we can see everything in there now. So as you say, it's not that big a job to remove the bottom end of a CBX. It's, uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a two or three hours work, I guess. Uh, maybe, probably less. Um, but yeah, I'm not having me rushing today. And normally if you're just removing the bottom end just to replace the bearings, and you knew the crank was okay, then uh, you wouldn't have to remove the top end. So, uh, so there we go. But we can see here, looking at these bearings, they're not down to the copper yet, but I would suspect they're past their, their best sell-by date. Um, so yeah, whilst we're here, I'll probably go ahead and replace all those. Well, depending on what the crank's like. But uh, anyway. There we go, I think we've done uh, reasonably well, and I think we'll just uh, stop the camera there, and I'm going to get out my cup of tea.